Captain Quinn, right here, and this is how to fly fish for sockeye. It's a meat fishery out here stocking up for the winter. If we can get a little scarce in the winter, you gotta be able to fatten up on these omega-3s. So what we got here is a nice beautiful sockeye. And now the easy part's over. And now it's for the hard part, processing your catch. So the first thing you wanna do when you catch any fish is bleed them out. So you just saw me bonk it down there, but all you do is you stick your finger in under the gill plate there, and you just pull out a gill. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna, well you see the blood coming out there, it's gonna drain the, the veins and the arteries of blood, as you may imagine, and then when you're, that'll help the fish keep longer and better, it'll taste better, and when you're gutting it, or sorry, when you're filleting it or staking it, you're not gonna get blood all over the meat, which kind of hampers with its, it's, uh, just causes the meat doesn't keep as long if you get it wet or blood all over it. So here we got one sockeye. We're in the mighty Skeena River. We're gonna go after another one. We just saw him flopping. Half the part of this, or the biggest part of this, is just finding a lane where fish are moving through. And I'll go over a few different techniques with you in a second. I'm gonna get back out there because there's some fish splashing and they move through pretty quick. So. those. Two animals were harmed in the making of this film, but they will be eaten. So just relax. Now there's a few things that I would consider, I mean, like I said, everyone has their own way of, of doing things. Certainly fishing for sockeye is no different, but there's a few things that through experience have saved me a lot of headache and grief and, and ultimately led to, to success for me in, in, this style, in this fishery. And one, I don't know if you've noticed, but I like to keep a really short line, no longer than my shooting head. And that way, if I snag up, I just got so sick and tired of losing gear. You see guys down there chucking lasers across the river and yeah, maybe they'll fish a little bit more water. Maybe they'll get a little bit bigger of a swim, swing. At the end of the day, the fish are in pretty tight. You don't need a long cast. And by, sh by sh chucking a really short line, no longer than your, your shooting head. If you do hang up a rock, I just roll cast beyond the rock and then I pull. It's kind of a skill, you have to work on it. And that, that puts a different point of pressure on the hook wherever it's snagged on that rock. And I haven't lost a hook in a very long time sockeye fishing. Now let's get into the gear. So, you know, like I said, everyone has their own way of doing things. We'll start with the rod. It's a built with backbone. It's a Skeena rod built and designed here in the Skeena by myself. It's an eight weight, 13 feet, uh, seven inches. And it's a very versatile rod. You can fish sockeye, heavy line. You can fish steelhead. You can even fish Chinook on it. Medium to large size rivers. It was designed for this region. And they're reasonably priced with a lifetime warranty. Then we got a sink tip, which some people will go all the way up to, to T20. I've got 20 feet of T14, and that seems to be just perfect for getting me down into the zone uh, with one or two men's. If, if I find I'm not touching bottom, I'll cast upstream a little bit more until you find that zone. You wanna every now and again feel bottom without snagging bottom every time, then you know when you're, you're in the zone. Now, so there you go. Shooting head is just a sketch That's all you need. Um, and the leader line is, varies depending on the fisherman's preference. I've gone as short as a foot and still hook them no problem. It kind of tends to, if you're using a big chunk of, of yarn or a, or a light hook, 
you kind of want to go with a shorter leader because then the sink tip will get it down. But as you see, I have a very, very sparsely tied fly there on a relatively heavy hook. So that, that fly sinks at an appropriate rate and I have about a eight foot leader on and that's just 20 pound mono. I like to go with a little bit of a heavy leader because you are snagging rocks a lot and I have no problem getting it off with that little roll cast that I do to unsnag it. The hook, the fly, I mean all I have here is a piece of yarn that I've tied onto the hook. Uh, you can get a little fancier if you want. If you know there's some steelhead or some coho, maybe a little bit more flash to, to you know, diversify. Uh, something like that, you know, sparse, little soft hackle. The thing is, you do tend to lose a lot of gear, so a lot of people will just go literally with a bait loop and a piece of yarn on a hook. And uh, then if they do lose some gear, then whatever. I don't like losing gear, I find it frustrating and ultimately it's just litter going into the river. So I don't mind putting on something a little dressier and shortening my cast because I don't really lose that many flies. And that's it. I'll show you how to read the water, how, what to look for. You're looking for water that's moving a little bit quicker, not your steelhead water, but definitely water you'll find steelhead in. Um, the pinch points are great. And yeah, you basically just need to find a lane. So the fish will come up and the bulk of them will go through a lane. If you can hit that zone and there's fish moving through, you could be into them every cast or every other cast. Um, sometimes you just need to put in the hours and wait for that wave to go through. And that's basically it. So all we're gonna do when we're uh, tying flies for sockeye is we're gonna make sure that we have a child's chair that looks exactly like a cat, some pink yarn, yarn some pliers for pinching the barbs, uh, some thread, scissors, and then a whip finish tool. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap right close to the eye of the hook a few times. That's it. Trim the excess. The tag off there. Take a chunk of yarn, and I like to kind of just pull it out. It'll give it a nice sort of pink wormy look. And then rather than wrapping it this way, so it's going down the shank of the hook, the, the tail, I will make it so the tail's going off the head of the hook, and I'll just wrap it around several times. And then I'll push it all forward, right to the eye, and then this little bulbous sort of yarn tag, I'll push forward and I'll secure it in place by wrapping the back of it nice and tight. Just a few times there like that. Take the whip finish tool, go around, pull her tight, do it again for good luck. Take her off, and then this is the final step. Out of the vise, you have it all facing forward, you just push it back, and you have a nice, very sparse, sort of pink worm, very easy to tie, and you'll get steelhead hitting that. Uh, as well as coho and you know pinks as well, um, and it'll work just perfectly for sockeye. There you go, I, just the pink worm yarn thing.